So we finally made it to the point in the course where we were going to start talking about VHDL. So VHDL, is, as I've been saying the whole semester, is really our digital design power tool. And at this point, it's fair to ask, like, if we have power tools now, why did we spend the last four weeks doing everything by hand? Why you know, suffer through all of the Boolean algebra and Carnot maps and multiplexers and logic diagrams and all, the, all this stuff to get to this point? The, the simple answer is that when you have a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. And if you have power tools and, and nothing else, then you can be a pretty dangerous person. I'm not in the sense that you're going to hurt somebody with your FPGA, um, but in the sense that you're not going to have a clue what you're doing um, when anything goes wrong, uh, and that your your ability to use the power tool right is contingent on actually having salt being able to use hand tools well, understanding your materials, understanding what you're working with, understanding that technique. And if you don't have any of that sense before you pick up the power tools, uh, it's gonna, you're gonna have a very hard time accomplishing what you want. So that's why we spent all this time developing, working, uh, developing your skills with digital design. And now we're gonna pick up the power tools and use that uh, to move forward. VHDL does not act at all like any of the programming languages that you're used to. In particular, it doesn't act like C or C++ or Java, JavaScript uh, that you might be used to if you've taken uh, Comp 11 or um, done other programming on your own. The part of this is because VHDL uh, has its heritage in Ada, which is a language created by the Department of Defense in the mid 80s. And uh, like perhaps a lot of things created by large government committees uh, tends to be uh, verbose and complex um, and perhaps perhaps not as uh, streamlined and efficient as you might like. However, the, those, the ADA heritage and all the things that come from that, so the fact that VHDL is not case sensitive, so putting capitalization doesn't matter, uh, is, is perhaps weird, but you know you can get used to that. Uh, the assignment, so we're, we're used to using the equal sign to, to do to an assignment. Uh, in VHDL, we're gonna use the, what elsewhere we would call a less than equal operator. Uh, there are semicolons, lots of semicolons, and in, in weird places. Okay, but, but all of these things, and, and they will get annoying. I, I have to admit, when I was learning VHDL, it was super frustrating, and I was tearing my hair out for several days. Um, but those things actually really are all surface issues. Um, you will you'll get the syntax. Um, you'll be able to use the cheat sheet that was provided on the website. I'm actually I'm less concerned that you learn the syntax and know exactly where to put a semicolon or not. You, even I don't remember that um, just off the top of my head. Um, but far more important, VHDL is completely unlike any programming language that you've used because it's not a programming language at all. It is a hardware description language. So this is almost certainly going to be the biggest challenge for you learning VHDL. Because up to this point, whether you've been programming for a semester or for several years, your brain has been trained and you've worked very hard to develop a mindset so that when you see code, your brain kind of switches into a particular mode where you start thinking like the computer and you're, you're executing statements line by line and you're, you're thinking about the flow through if statements and the flow through for loops and so forth. And so as soon as you see code in a monospace font, you start thinking that way. But VHDL is not a programming language. It's not executing on a computer. It is a hardware description language. It's describing the layout of digital hardware. And digital hardware doesn't have if statements and for loops and in fact, it's not sequential at all. Uh, everything in that circuit is happening all at once. And so the real challenge is not so much remembering where to put the semicolons, although you'll have to do some of that. The real challenge is remembering that you are designing a circuit and thinking in terms of digital logic and not thinking in terms of a sequence of instructions. So I'm gonna continue harping on this um, pretty much every week of the course. Um, as we introduce more and more concepts in VHDL. 
but just get it right up front. A VHDL does not act like any programming you, language you're used to, and not just because its syntax is kind of funny and weird. So this is probably as good a time as any to address VHDL versus Verilog or System Verilog. Uh, the, the truth is, right, there are a bunch of syntactical differences, uh, and, and there are there are a few differences that are a little more than surface deep. But on the whole, VHDL and Verilog are trying to do the same basic thing. Uh, they are both languages designed to describe digital hardware. And so in that sense, they are more like each other than any other programming language or any programming language that you have encountered or will encounter. And so frankly, the difference between whether you learn VHDL first or you learn Verilog first uh, really doesn't matter that much. If the thing that you're really learning is not you know, sort of the ADA-like syntax of VHDL or sort of the C-like syntax of Verilog, the thing you're really learning is how to write code that describes a circuit. And if you master that, whether you mastered it in VHDL or mastered it in Verilog is basically irrelevant. You'll be able to pick up the other language in a matter of a few days. In fact, you will be able to read, by the end of this course, you'll be able to read Verilog code and have a pretty good sense of what's going on without ever, ever without having ever actually written VR, Verilog yourself or studied it yourself. And just from understanding VHDL, the concepts in Verilog will very quickly make sense. So we're using VHDL simply because other courses at Tufts are using VHDL. But there's sort of no other reason for that. It's not because I necessarily prefer it or because I think it's a better language for beginners. It's just because that fits in with the flow of what others are doing. One more thing that makes VHDL kind of weird is that it is designed to do multiple things. So back in the 80s when VHDL was created, one common thing you might want to do with it is to model hardware that you're going to build with other real components. So you've got a, a wall full of racks of actual digital circuit components. So different integrated circuits, they do different things. And you could create models of these in VHDL and wire them together virtually and then simulate the entire thing but before you actually grab all of the circuits out of their bins and construct them on a printed circuit board. And so being able to describe and model real circuits that you were gonna build was a really important thing. Uh, and in particular, there's ways to model, for example, propagation delays through circuits. There's ways to define components and link them together. And all of these pieces are useful for modeling real circuits that you would build in some other way. But around that same time, FPGAs were just being introduced and computational tools for designing circuits were growing in popularity. And it became clear if you could design describe, and describe your digital system, your circuit with VHDL, then you could have a computer actually take that description and implement it in hardware. And that all of this hard work of figuring out exactly which gates to use and how to wire them all together and so forth, that, the computer could do that work. You just have to describe your circuit and then the computer can implement it. And so a second thing that VHDL is designed for is to allow you to design hardware that's gonna get implemented with an FPGA or an application specific integrated circuit. A third thing that VHDL is designed to do is to let you write code to test designs or models that you've created for either the, the previous two scenarios. So in the same way that you could write some C code to test a function that you've written in C, VHDL lets you write VHDL code that tests a hardware model that you've written in VHDL. Uh, and we're going to see this next week as we start actually writing some test benches of our own. But there's all kinds of stuff you would like to be able to do in test code, like print things out to the user or delay for a certain amount of time that you can't do in a circuit. Like we can't have a circuit. There's no print F statement, for example, in the FPGA, um, the same way that it might be. But VHDL allows us to do things like print or delay or whatever that can't actually be turned into 
synthesizable logic that we actually implement in the FPGA. And so this is going to be an important distinction. VHDL has all kinds of constructs and, and things that we can do that are included in the language for the purpose of testing other code that is not actually usable in terms of designing a circuit. That distinction is a little weird, so just kind of file that away, and next week we'll come back to it in more detail when we talk about test benches.